morning, everybody. Thank you for coming today. I've already got hands waving back at me, so I, at least one of y'all can hear me. But it's such a blessing and a privilege to be here with you on the 31st day of January. We're already down in 2021 and so much hope uh, in the in before us with uh, vaccines and rollouts and uh, different concerns that have come. We, we've seen the news about the protests in Los Angeles and I just, I just hold out prayers of, of very stability, especially as I begin to do service and there's a police car driving through. Thing the chair of trustees is here in case something happened, right? Are you in trouble or are you looking? <laughs> we'll see. Thankfully, we get to have this example that we can share with our friends in our, our community that we even have our friends in the Oceanside Police Department. We'll drive through and check things out. Yeah, I would always ask you to wave right on right as he drives back through. Going to. Such a lesson to have a, a dear friend drive through the parking lot check things out. That's, that's great. Um, as we move in our time of prayer, well, they're looking for somebody. Slightly distracted. I'll, I'll get my mind back on the ship, but it's it's good that he's driving around. As we move into our time, we will look for our protectors, this representative of the Ocean driving around, and everybody that's trying to do their best. and. And right now, if, if you're prayerful and healthy, I know that the, the city of San Diego is looking for volunteers for uh, distribution of the vaccine. So uh, if you're healthy in, in that matter, maybe something that we pray over. Our announcements, I, there's, there's no meetings coming up next week. So I enjoy, enjoy your week of just watching our Tuesday and Wednesday videos on YouTube. As well as our Tuesday, uh, our uh, discussion time is a better way to describe it. It's been a great time of directed conversation on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock. Uh, so I'll hold on to those things and send your prayers, and um, let's join together in our opening prayer. Be amazed at the glories of God's creation, be astonished by all the amazing works that Jesus has done. Be respectful of the teachings that have enlightened the faith. Be grateful for the blessings of all who worship God's holy name. As we move to our time of, of personal prayers, we'll begin out with our prayers for everyone that has expressed needs and, and, and worries within their lives. And there is a Christian rock musician, his name is Toby Mack. And I, I start off this section with a, a quote from him. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could ever imagine. As we think about this promise of God's greater vision of all things, we have many friends that we're praying for from Marie Ackman, who is uh, dealing with heart issues. I, I have spoken to her again recently, and she's she's okay, but uh, just uh, still a need to be aware of and the, to pray for her over. Also, we continue prayers for our dear friends at care facilities. Marie Akmila Tinkle, as those facilities do the best they can. It's my understanding Marie may have already received the vaccine uh, as as. Um, the whole facility that she in was receiving it. And I'm not really sure about the progress at Brookdale for Isla. I need to check in with her again. But within these care facilities, they're them doing their best to care for everything. Um, you know, there's so many names that have been going through over the last few weeks of friends who have, who have contracted COVID-19 and dear friends who have passed away from COVID-19. With, with the fear of forgetting any of those names, I am blessed that God knows all those names. So I present in this time of prayer everyone that has been affected in any way uh, by uh, COVID-19. Uh, continued prayers for everybody that are going through uh, journeys with cancer. Uh, Larry and Kathy's brother, brother-in-law, um, dealing with, with those things. Just, um, bless his daughter. 
also hold out prayers for, for mental health, and there are some unspoken concerns in this nature. Uh, so, so this prayers across the board as we remember that God's thoughts are greater than our own, and let's be in a place of silent prayer for these needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now we move into prayers uh, of uh, places of, of comfort. And our, our physical and emotional needs aren't always the most predominant things that give us trouble. There's times that we move into places of decision making, that we are searching for clarity of God to make these decisions. And even within those worries or unknowing, we know that we serve a God that's greater than all things. I, I share with you a quote from Boy Bennett that shares, being grateful does not mean that everything is necessarily good. It just means that you can accept it as a gift. So this time as we find our places in decision making, as we find our places in, in trying to uh, make judgments and, and go through ideas that are for the greater good. I want us to remember that it, it, although it may not be easy, there is a gift at the end of the journey of conversation and prayer. So at this time, let's hold a moment of silent prayer for prayers of clarity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. There is a motivational speaker and an author that I like. His name's Mark Mara. And as we move into this time that I normally share our prayers for unspoken concerns, I, I share with you a quote of his that he had on Twitter last week. As we weigh out the hurts and pains that people don't always express, and the, the quote is this, the, the tongue is a small part of the body but it can cause so much damage. Our very words can either build people up or tear them down. Don't miss the chance to say, of saying a kind word. You may never know how much that person needed it. As we live in a world of unspoken concerns, let's remember how even our unknown actions become comforters for those dear friends. As we take a moment to pray for the ones who don't know the words or are scared to share the words of their aches and pains, please be in a place of prayer. Gracious God, in all ways that you care for us, be real. In all ways that you care for us, be visible. Amen.
continue in our time of prayer together. God of power and might, you sent prophets to your people, calling us back to your covenant and teaching us your ways. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus, teaching such authority that our eyes were open to see your ways anew. Open your hearts and minds that we may understand and proclaim your teachings for all to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And in continued focus of the prayer and guidance and authority of Jesus Christ, we celebrate his guidance and care through the words of the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's celebrate the day in the words of our words of affirmation. God's love knows no bounds. God's loving mercy endures forever. Rejoice and be glad. Our scripture today is found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. Then they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogues who possessed by impure spirits cried out, what do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shocked the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were so amazed that they asked others, what is this? A new teaching, and with authority, he came, he even gave orders to impure spirits, and they obeyed him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. The word of God for all people. Amen. You're going to see the original title of my sermon on the screen, if you can see it. I think Ray's even looking on his computer, so... I'm going to share with everybody that's watching at home. The title slide will not completely connect with where God has led me to, to share today. My intention originally was to speak with you and to give an image and a focus on the authority of Jesus Christ. But I think that we all get that. We understand that it's the grace and actions of Jesus Christ that has brought us the opportunity to find freedom. I think that we all understand that Jesus Christ has the authority over sin and death and through his death, burial, and resurrection has created a path for us to forgiveness. I think what we already get that. I want to look at this scripture from a different set of eyes, and I don't so much want to look at Christ commanding the spirit of, of evil and injustice to go away. Because I think, at least from the people I'm looking through their car windows at right now, I think that we get that. I think that we see how that we have been called through the words of John Wesley to serve the world as our parish. And through missions and actions of proclaiming justice to the world, I think that we get Jesus' authority. What I want us to focus on today is not so much the spirit that was within this person that Jesus proclaimed to go away. I want us to talk about the person that was set free because Jesus Christ said, get out. So many times I've heard this scripture shared, and it was the image of authority of Jesus Christ and proclaiming everything I just said to you, how the authority of Jesus Christ creates salvation and how the authority of Jesus Christ can remove the stain of sin and death but today, I want to talk about very specifically, and even the scripture really doesn't cover it, 
there was freedom that was granted to a person because of the words of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ said, get out, an individual was set free from something that had overtaken them, overrun their lives, and had stolen control from them. I want to talk to you today about the personal freedom that we have through our relationship with Jesus Christ and how there truly is a personal freedom that comes from proclaiming Christ as our Lord and Savior. There's things that exist within our lives, distractions, addictions, and justice that become anchors. And we live in a world in which Jesus Christ has already proclaimed the words, get out. But I want to change those words from get out today to you have been set free. Because that's what he's saying to the individual. When the spirit leaves the body of this man, that man has been set free. You have been set free. So much of my life has been built around the necessity of making sure that I'm doing everything right. And even within the quest of trying to do everything right, there is an anchor and there's a hindrance at times. There's an evil foul spirit that limits an individual from seeing how they're already doing what's right, how they're already in a path of care and that they are more worried about losing the path of care than celebrating the freedom that comes with that path of care. I want you in our first stoppage in the sermon for our prayer moment, I want you to think about the things that come to your life that causes you to doubt. I want you to think about the things that make you question your abilities of being a servant. I want you to think about the things that make you question that you truly are a beautiful creation from the hands of God. And as you think about those things in this prayer moment, I want you to hear the words of the authority of Jesus Christ as he uttered for this person, get out. I want you to hear Christ's words telling that doubt to go away. I want you to hear the words of Jesus Christ telling that doubt that it has no power or authority. And more importantly, I want you to hear the true freedom that you can have in celebrating the gift that Jesus Christ has given you. And our prayer quotes today, the second prayer was shared that our moments of gratitude are not necessarily built within moments of peace, but sometimes we learn how to celebrate the worries. We learn how to celebrate the teaching moments that God is using the hard times to equip us through. I want you, instead of moments of doubt and worry, wondering if you're good enough, I want you to remember because of Jesus Christ's grace, you have been chosen. And I want you to remember the gift of freedom. When Christ says, get out, he's also talking to our doubts that limit us from trying things that we're being called to do by God. Let's be in a place of prayer to hear God's authority within our worries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we continue as focusing on this scripture, I want us to think again about the things that we cannot handle on our own. This individual sitting in the synagogue that day was possessed by something they could not control. And nothing under their own merit or their own ability or their own efforts would, could take care of that. It took the authority of Christ, something bigger and stronger and outside of themselves. 
that was used to make it possible for this individual to find freedom. If we look at the Toby Mac quote that I used earlier within our prayer time, it talks about the one that has a grander vision and a grander understanding and a grander thought, the God that serves us all. Sometimes we are so shackled in moments that we can't see the things that are sitting there as tools to set us free, including the reality of a God that's walking side by side with us and holding our hands. As Jesus Christ utters these words, get out, it was a reality that that individual no longer had to try. And one of my favorite quotes is, when you're at the end of your rope, let go. And which leads into another of my favorite quotes, let go and let God. As we reach these places that we realize that these are things that we cannot do on our own, that we are a part of a greater community. I want you to hear the words, you have been set free so that it's not you that has to do it. It's the trust in the greater community of Jesus Christ that everything is being cared for. Let's be in a moment of prayer as we hear the words, you are set free for the times that we may not have the spiritual gifts for a situation, but we are gifted by a greater God that has put us in a greater community that does. Please be in a place of prayer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And there's one more thing that's happening in this scripture. It's the reality of seeing something takes place that motivates others to respond to it. We see all these others visibly watching what Christ does, and they begin to react to the actions, and those actions begin to prepare other hearts and souls to receive the message that Jesus Christ is about to prepare and about to show and about to complete. Looking at the quote I shared with you today from Mark Merrill, it's the idea that our words and our actions become the things that, that fertilize the soil for the growth of the reality of God's greatness and God's glory. As Christ does these things, as he uses the gifts that he has, he shows an example of authority that others respond to. Where in our previous prayer, we prayed for the places that we may not have the spiritual gifts to prepare for, there are places that we have been gifted to serve. And there are places that God has made us a very specific hands and feet that can do wonderful and powerful things in the name of grace. At this time, I want you to hear the words you have been set free. And I want you to pray over the gifts that you see in your life that have you been blessed by the Holy Spirit to use and to pray over ways to use them. Please be in prayer. On the night in which Jesus Christ gave himself up for us, he was teaching his disciples the path of his grace. He was sharing with them as he raised the bread and he showed the bread around them and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ was sharing the actions of grace that he would share that would set us free to live and to serve in celebration. On that evening, as he raised the cup and he shared the cup with those around him and said, drink from this, all, all of you. This is the cup of my covenant with you for now and for always. 
promising that in those moments that we find ourselves in places that we cannot care for things or on our own, the covenant of Jesus Christ is still real and present. The gift of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, precious God, please make these gifts be as your body and blood for us as we celebrate your gifts of grace and your actions of authority that have set us free. And then through these things, we celebrate the ways that you have displayed your authority as we celebrate the mysteries of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Please continue to bless these gifts of bread and cup and to make them as your body and blood for us as we celebrate the freedom that comes through your actions of love. Amen. Please receive the gifts of Jesus Christ. And because of these gifts, we become living offerings of God's love. When we are set free to go forth and celebrate, we become living gifts of God's covenant of grace. As we bring forth today's living gifts and offerings, God, we are thankful that you continue to provide for us. You have blessed us in many, many ways, financially, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, Bless our gifts, God, that multitudes may know your blessings and the joy of sharing them. Amen. Before that we move into our benediction, I will share with you, next week will be different. Next week, we will have the blessing once again to celebrate the presence and, and love of Jesus Christ through our outdoor seating arrangement. I shared with you that we would be in our in-car services through the stay-at-home order. That order has been lifted, so we will once again be in our outdoor setting next week. I, I'll share with you that there is a, a necessity. Please call in before Thursday so that we know that you're coming, and I, I use this as a, an example of celebration. If we had moved back into our outdoor seating last week, our 10 o'clock service would have been over capacity. So there, there is a response that we're still doing things and a response of people wanting to be present. But I, I, am, I am very, very cautious and I want us to make sure that we're taking care of each other and have ways to ensure our social distancing. Uh, so please, please call ahead so that I can make sure that everybody has a place at, at the services and, and I can also make sure that everybody has safe distance when they're here as well. So I'm excited that we'll all be out of our cars next week and as we continue to move forward and I continue to pray prayers of freedom and blessings, the more vaccines and the more lifted restrictions and the closer that will be to seeing what our new worship will be. But thank you for being a part of this journey and, and participating in all the necessary ways that we can take care of each other. And uh, bring your chairs and bring your blankets and put on your long pants because it's probably going to be cold. And um, we'll do the best we can between the heaters and the blankets to keep everybody warm. But we will uh, moving uh, forward movement once again. Thank you for, for being here today and be inspired by the works of Jesus. Be inspired by all the good he brought to the lives of the people in need. Go and do likewise. May the gifts and the graces of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.